talked about in the last episode we talked about fighting the enemy we also mentioned that the buddhi or discriminative faculty or intellect is the one that helps us to choose between right and wrong it at least tells us what is right and wrong what is good for us and what is not good for us and yet we still have to make the choices as i have said after the mind says he wants it anyway the intellect tells us it is good or bad and why but still the choice is not made the choice still has to be made and that is one of the greatest distinction of human beings in this world of creation where no other animal or creature sun the moon the animal the trees Uh, the lower worms and germs nobody has the power to discriminate and decide human beings are the only ones who have a choice at any given time and is always free to make a choice and that is what our instrument is if we have to fight we must have the instrument to fight this is the fight fighting instrument choosing the right direction what the katha upanishad says prayer and shreya one that leads to pleasures like we just recently saw one of the ceos and how much millions and billions of dollars they have been robbing the loot the poor people who are also greedy unfortunately and allow themselves to be robbed so we see that uh, the choices we make are very poor and then ultimately nobody is benefiting because we have this unlimited greed and in order to control that we must make the right choice Lord Buddha is helping us here in uh, uh, making proper choices, and if we don't make it, what happens? And if we make the proper choice, what happens? He says, first of all, we are what we think, the mind. We make ourselves through our mind. All that we are arises with our thoughts. Thoughts control us. With our thoughts, we make our whole world. with the thought that i want to marry i marry and i have family and children and friends it was all in the thought to begin with that is where it initiated we are the creature of sankalpa or desire or thoughts speak or act with an impure mind and trouble will follow you as the wheel follows the ox that draws the cart so if we don't if we are not vigilant we will have this baggage following us just like a wheel follows the ox and we are considered ox carrying nothing but load in this world complaining about everything or no matter how much we have we are always dissatisfied we are never happy with what god has given us and so like ox we we go on working we don't know the difference what the load is whether it is gold or whether it is a stone Uh, we just carry the load the world has become a burden our load the family has become a burden our self has become a burden the society is burden we are only like an ox carrying this burden and this following us because all was in our mind we are what we think all that we are arises with our thoughts with our thoughts we make our own world speak or act with a pure mind and we will be making a pure world for ourselves and happiness will follow us definitely as a shadow follows us 
it is unshakable. So if we are truthful and if we talk truthful, behave truthful, then happiness will follow. If we are the slave of the thoughts and desires, then the burden will follow us. Now people complain and they say, look, how he abused me and how he beat me, how he threw me down and robbed me. When you live with such thoughts, you are living in hatred. But look how he abused me and beat me, how he threw me down and robbed me, abandon such thoughts and we will live in love. And love is what we are looking for. So abandon all hatred, no matter how others have treated you, you deserve the treatment. Actually, it's a process of purification. Thank God what you are suffering through because that is the way of love. In this world, hate never yet dispelled hate. Anger cannot remove anger. Only love can dispel hate. This is the law, ancient law, and it is an inexhaustible law, whether we know it or not. You too shall pass away sooner than you think. Knowing this, how can you quarrel with people and waste your time? How can you get angry? How can you look for justice when you are yourself full of injustice? How easily the wind overturns a frail tea, tree. Our life is frail when we are swaying by the desires. Seek happiness in the senses. Indulge in food and sleep. And you too will be uprooted like a tree, uprooted by floods and winds and carried away into the ocean to its ultimate destruction. The wind cannot overturn a mountain. Temptations cannot touch a man who is awake, strong and humble, who masters himself and he minds the law. He follows the law of Yama and Niyama. If a man's thoughts are muddy, if he is reckless and full of deceit like Narad, how can he wear a yellow robe of love? Whoever is master of his own nature and desires, bright, clear and true, he may indeed wear a yellow robe. Mistaking the false for the true and the true for the false, you overlook the heart and fill yourself with desire. See the false as false and true as true. Look into your heart. Follow the love, Gita and Mira. An unreflecting mind is a poor roof. Passion, like the rain, floods the house. But if the roof is strong, there is a shelter. Whoever follows impure thoughts suffers in this world and the next. In both worlds he suffers. And how greatly when he sees the wrong he has done to himself and others. But whoever follows the law in joyful, is here joyful here and joyful in the other world and joyful wherever he goes. In both worlds he rejoices, and how greatly when he sees the good he has done. For great is the harvest in this world, and greater still in the next, for the saints who love people, who deliver the message of love, and bear the hatred of the world in spite. However many holy words you read, however many books you turn over, however many words you speak, what good will they do you if you do not act upon them? Are you a shepherd who counts the other man's sheep 
never sharing the way with others. Can other men sheep give you milk? Read as few words as you like and speak even fewer, but act upon the law as soon as you have read them. Give up the old ways of lust and greed, passion, enmity and folly. Know the truth and find peace and love and bliss and joy. And then share this way with all the fellow men. This then is the choice that we must make. We must wake, wake up, as the Lord says, without waking up and whether we trying and struggling, whether we win or not, our job is to simply try to discriminate, choose the right thing and go ahead and fight. That is all we are required to do. And if we will do that, then I think that we are on the right path. However, in choosing, we are always depending on scriptures and then we always interpret the scriptures the way we want so we have again the same problem we come back to square one that everybody wants to interpret Gita the way he feels comfortable and he wants to do what his mind tells him to do and again we say that it is not easy to interpret the words because our mind is impure Gita can be interpreted only by those who are pure like Mira and Buddha and Jesus and the saints, because it is written by saints, it is written by pure souls, and only pure souls understand the pure souls' language. So here we have a problem with impurity, we are trying to understand uh, the pure message, and no wonder then we will have a problem, because we are not interfacing, we are, our impurity of heart cannot interface with the purity that God is requiring uh, in order to uh, get the love and blessing. There again, our teachers who are supposed to guide us have made such a tremendous mess and misguiding us because they themselves are misguided. This morning when I was meditating on it and I read a passage which I would like to read 2,000 years ago, what Buddha said about those who were misleading. And uh, we do not know how to choose. The people to whom we go for help to choose those teachers and of course the leaders in all fields, I'm not talking about Dharma Guru. Dharma Gurus are the prime one here. The Jesus is speaking about Dharma Gurus and the teachers. And uh, I think that it is a worthy passage. I would very much like you to carefully listen. 2,000 years ago what he did and look at the tremendous loss we have got. We never listened to it and we are worse today than we were then. He is, this subject is false teachers and their destruction. And he says to the people who are listening to him, few followers he had, about ten of them, he's talking to them. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies even denying the sovereignty of Lord who brought them, bringing swift destructions on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over their head and the destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare even angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness like Mira, and seven others. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Goram by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly teachers and ungodly listeners, and if he rescued a lot, a person who was honest, a righteous man, 
who was distressed by the filthy lives of law lawlessness of men. Bold and arrogant, these men are not afraid to slander celestial beings, yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not bring slanderous accusations against such beings in the presence of the Lord. But these men blasphemies in matters they do not understand. They are like brute beasts, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed, and like beasts they too will perish. They will be paid back with harm for the harm they have done. Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed and acres brood. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam. So this is what Jesus Christ has to say about the teachers who were teaching in those days in the temples while doing this uh, business of money and prostitution and he was warning them that watch out there is hardly anybody who is going to really uh, guide you. That is why we have to be very vigilant. Uh, we cannot blame God for it. He has given us wisdom. We cannot say we did not find a right guru. Gita is Guru, with these saints we are talking about uh, are our real teachers and we have some sense, uh, we should not kid ourselves and uh, the love that we want is what really is not available through anybody except us and directly our relation with God. Uh, love is what Jesus was teaching, love is what Buddha is teaching, love is what Mira is teaching, love is what we really all of us want. And